welcome, welcome back <laughs> to the uh, Midwest Sports Show. And uh, we all just got a good look at uh, Gene's uh, ceiling fan. Gene, yeah, how do you like that? Gene, you don't need uh, you don't need AC. Oh, man, I was not recording the podcast. No. All right, you do not eat, need AC when you got uh, a ceiling fan. Am I right? That's all I need. Yep. <laughs> yep. Sure thing. All I need is that for the temperature to stay around uh, 75 degrees. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yep. All right, there, lot, it is. there lot, it is. Yep, a lot of ceiling fans uh, in the Midwest, but uh, not so much here. I've noticed. Have you noticed that? Well, this is a my building is really old, so. Oh, okay. That's maybe. Clean it. I have my Iowa doll too. <laughs> All right. Well, this is the uh, very special. All right, Gene. A little, a little worried if you uh, pan the camera down a little bit more than that. All right, so. Uh, all right. Okay, right there. This is the uh, the Midwest Sports Show, a uh, podcast, a video cast about Midwest sports, and uh, we have uh, Gene remote location uh, right now. <laughs> yes, and uh, I'm about very close to the Hollywood Bowl. That's where I am. Yep, and uh, yeah, he's in an undisclosed location. Okay, but it's Hollywood. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's not. Man, I've been uh, I've been working. Uh, I just started working again over by Hollywood, Gene. It's, oh, okay. It's just uh, oh yeah. Well, Gene, you know the, uh, the the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You know these stars on the ground. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I see them every day. It's so annoying to have these people like stop while you're trying to move, and then these people are trying to take yeah. pictures. You know, with like Vince Vaughn's star, you know, or Queen star, you know. Right. So annoying. Yeah. And then you there ever like you ever like walk by some of these stars and like, you know, you got your uh, Gene Autry's, you know, your uh you know, Bill Murray's, all this stuff, all these famous people. Right. And then you then you walk by someone who you have no idea what that is, who that is, yeah, what they did. That. Yes. Yeah, and it's probably some there's person a- that was like probably the most famous person like in nineteen forty two. Or something like that, and then probably yeah. had a bad movie or had a scandal, and then never was heard from again. And we're just walking uh-huh. right over their star. I've been to a lot of them. I was at Rodney Dangerfield's when he got he, his star. I was at Quentin Tarantino's. I was at Dennis Hopper. I've been to a lot of them because <laughs> they they, I don't know. But Quentin Tarantino, I was walking. I was coming out of the gym. And he, a car pulls up and out hops Quentin Tarantino. It was right when he, right in front of the Chinese theater. He got a star um, right after a hate play. Yeah, and you're, exciting. And you're like, uh, you're like, you're a bad motherfucker, Quinn. Yeah, that's exactly or, what I said. Or this isn't uh, dead n-word storage outside. There's no n-word, <laughs> dead n-word storage outside. Funny that yeah. he, uh, funny that he decided to do that line, right? He he wrote that line. He just like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna read that. I'm gonna be that character. I'm talking yeah. about Pulp Fiction, Gene. You know, what I'm talking about the scene where they bring the dead oh, guy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Of course. All right. Right. <laughs> All right. So my name is uh, Chris Dotson. We got Gene Steichen uh, here, fresh from uh, the Midwest. He yeah. uh, came from the Midwest for a little. Uh, what'd you call it? A jaunt. Yeah, I was only there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I came back Monday. But man, I went to a lot of places in four days. Now, did you uh, did you go there just for the Bears game and the Packer game, or did no. you like have other family stuff? Yeah, huh? no, I I went. No, the main reason was I went to see my mom. I took her to the Iowa football game. Oh, okay, there. But you go. Um, but that's no the Bears game. That was a pretty big deal too. All right. So, and uh, you know, the last episode, you know, you, we you left us with a cliffhanger. Uh, yes. That you've oh, been, you've God. been building up for I don't know, like maybe six months now. I think you've been yapping about this goddamn these ticket prices or something. Yeah, and they did not disappoint. And uh, they, so, so Gene, why don't you uh, end the suspense? Everyone's been waiting for it. How much did you pay for these I goddamn paid, tickets? I did pay. I, I paid four fifty. Oh my ticket. god! Per would you say yeah. per ticket? You bought two? No, I just bought one. Oh okay. I, no, 
Good yeah. luck. Four. Oh my god, that, that is a nice car payment, Gene. That's a nice and car. They, I, I, you know what? The ticket prices. Because I, I had to pull the trigger because they, there were very few left and the prices kept going up. I mean, that was the last one even in that range. And I wanted to go inside the stadium and see the pregame stuff. But I was really at a dilemma. But then I'm thinking, gosh, I'm already here. All I right. was standing outside Kobe Field. Well, what, what time was it? What time was it when you're this is going through your head? I went in about a half hour before because I wanted to see all the pregame stuff. It's the 100th anniversary of the NFL. <laughs> Yeah, what is it? I, 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 can I pay this much for a ticket? So uh, what what was it when you like kind of like landed? How about we start there? How much was it like when you landed? Was it four twenty five, four hundred? When I when I left in the morning, you could have got a ticket for three hundred. Oh, uh, when man. I left this morning, and then I was thinking, oh, my, but there were still there were still uh, I think uh, I don't know seven hundred tickets left. I go it. There's no way these ticket oh, prices man. can hold. You, you should have jumped. You should have jumped. I landed in Chicago and they had gone up and there was fewer tickets. I go, this can't keep on. <laughs> so I waited. The longer I waited, the ticket prices kept going up. And then with about a half hour before the game, so there was one ticket at 450 and everything else was over 500. Oh, my gosh. I was like, mm. You just made and some guy's ticket, night. Yeah, and also it was uh, Soldier Field. All the seats are good, but I was in the last row, way up top. You're in the so, last row, literally the last row. Yep, yep. I had the NFL, the two uh, people from the NFL Network with their cameras up there, and they, <laughs> they, they, they hey, can I stand on the back of the seat and get some pictures? He's like, yeah, go ahead. Whatever. But hey, no problem. I, I only paid four hundred and fifty dollars for this goddamn ticket. Yeah, sure, go ahead. You got it for free, buddy. But I I was already there and I don't know. That was a tough one. That was a that was a moral dilemma. What was, was the like, uh oh, man. who who were the bigger loss? You were Mitch Trubisky. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I, it it was on uh, my the ticket prices were about on par with the Bears' offense. It was pretty brutal, <laughs> but it was so great. Once I once I accepted and got inside, it was great. Well, Gene, if I would have told and, you uh, you multiplied the number of points the Bears scored by a one hundred, and that's the amount you would have paid, you would have been yeah, glad. You would have been glad for that. Yeah. <laughs> when 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 King Tom I was like, why didn't I buy the ticket this morning? Usually, ticket prices drop, but. <clears throat> Yeah, but this is you... such a special case. Soldier Field only holds sixty-two thousand seats, and everybody was thinking the Bears are. This is the Super Bowl team, and it's a hundredth anniversary, and all this stuff. The excitement level was crazy. And we're gonna we beat the Packers. Tw- no, they only once last year, right? We beat the Packers last year. We're gonna get them now. I mean, I went to that game. That was only a couple hundred, but wow, wow. And you... then I think, what could? I- different I, I you can't really anticipate tick prices are gonna sky uh but anyway i i'm once i was inside i put it aside and i was like <laughs> okay it's over yeah once you're inside and, then, and you uh, see you see aaron Rodgers throw a uh rainbow through the air you're like yeah, yeah that was worth it you're like that's worth it it was so great the being there i mean how often i go well the nfl only turns 100 once so <laughs> You know, it's not even a hundred years, right? Some sort of fake number that they're just arbitrarily deciding. Their own number last year. Yeah. Uh, t- they say nineteen. I don't know. I don't know how they figured out how many teams are playing then. It was in the pack. Oh wait, maybe they're they're celebrating the hundredth anniversary of avoiding a contract. How about that, huh? <laughs> The NFL yeah. was uh, the modern NFL was established when uh, the contract of so and so was uh, yeah. <laughs> voided. Um, it was a, you know right when I came in, they had all these the paratroopers were landing. One guy, the one guy, uh, he parachuted in carrying a Bears flag and someone else with the American flag. The excitement level was sky. It was pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> even though. Where I was sitting, I was sitting right next to Lake Michigan. So, and I was sitting on par with, you know, because uh, Soldier Field downtown, basically, right on Lake Michigan. And so I was sitting at the eye level with the Sears Tower, or whatever. <laughs> what 
What was taller, your seats or the Sears Tower? I think I was right on the level. You couldn't have sat. There were no rows behind me. And I was in the the corner of the end zone. Isn't that super depressing when you're, like, walking up the stairs and you're just, like, looking at the letters of the rows? And you're just like, no, this this cannot be the last row. This cannot be the last. Up, you're in the last row. Keep going. Going. Yep. Yeah. And it's the last row. But and then outside where the the new stadium is, you see the old seats from the old soldier field. But it was great because in everybody got a a, a rally towel for the Bears. It said uh, Chicago Bears 100 years. And so everyone was waving those. But then they they <laughs> they didn't get a chance to wave them too often. The, the waves turned into boos. I was surprised how much the Bear fans booed. Yeah, they were they were booed uh, going off during halftime. But we will uh, let's we'll, we'll get to that. We we'll, we got all the notes here, Gene. Let's start from the very top. We might as well get into this yeah. game. Oh, uh, by the way, there was a there was a rap show before the before the game out in Grand Park or whatever. Did, did you? I know you went there, yeah. right? I was there. I was there for all that <laughs> stuff. And they had the new statue. They have uh, Walter Payton statue. Oh, yeah. And then the statue of uh, George Hallis. By the way, I found myself, I was so high up, I found myself watching the game on the big screen. I go, I didn't pay $400 to watch on the big screen. Watch watch the field. So yep. I had to keep looking. To follow yep. the field. Well, it's okay, yeah. like, in between plays. So. so. Yeah. So, all right. Well, uh, Gene, uh, I knew the Bears were in trouble, Gene. Uh, before the game even started, because Little Wayne, you know Little Wayne, right, Gene? Oh. Well, we'll start with the news. By the way, I might as well announce it while I'm here. But you know Little Wayne, right? Apparently, yeah, he he's one. He has seizures all the time. He's drinking <laughs> Uh right. Little Wayne texted Skip Bayless that uh, Aaron Rodgers had, and uh, I'm sorry that it, okay. So let me start over. Little Wayne texted Skip Bayless that Aaron Rodgers and Matt LaFleur have something up their sleeve for the Thursday night game. Little Wayne, Gene. Oh, really? I, someone Was should have told – I wish someone would have told the Bears fans that. You would have had cheaper tickets. Wow. Little, I know. <laughs> they got something up their sleeve. Little Wayne texting Skip Bayless. Hey, don't worry about the Packers. They got something up their sleeve. All right, all right. All right, Little. All right, Little. First name Little, right? All right. Yeah. And then, uh, L-I-L. No, Lil Wayne. <laughs> yep. All right. And then, uh, Gene, I know you were at the game, so you didn't see the broadcast, but uh, they were, uh, NBC was uh, d- digging all in to the uh, 100th anniversary, and they were wearing uh, L and Chris and Michelle Tafoya were wearing 1920s garb clothes. Wow. News, like pre- press, press clothes from the 1920s. With like a uh, piece of paper in their hat, you know that says wow. press. I- I'm yeah, sure, I'm yeah. Sure, you did. Uh, I'm sure you missed that, Gene. I did. I did. <laughs> I didn't record it and rewatch it. At- no, no, I didn't see that. Isn't it weird when you're like uh, when you watch a game that you you actually saw and you watch? And you're like, I don't remember that. I don't remember that. I do not remember yeah. that. It's like you miss a lot because I. The next day, I was listening to ESPN Chicago, and I was like, oh, I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. Then I was like, oh, Trub- I think Trubisky threw 45 times. I had no idea. It seemed like he didn't throw that much. Maybe it was just uh, huh. he didn't throw that many passes accurate. Yeah. Right. Well, maybe you just uh, mentally forgot about them or something. Your brain erased yeah. them from your head. Uh, all right. And then again for the broadcast, uh, what's her name? McCaskey? What's it? Virginia McCaskey? Virginia, I think she's 94. Yeah. <laughs> and she's George Palace's uh, widow. Yep, she. Uh, he might... she's the widow? Holy God. Well, he was probably like 50, yeah. right? And then she was like 20 when they got yeah. married or something? I think he died in the 80s, maybe. Jesus. And he I... coached the whole time, right? Uh, he No, he was... He was the owner. He he stopped coaching in the sixties or seventies. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe six. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, anyway, she like uh, pretty much read a letter in an opening monologue, and she said that Dad would be proud of the Chicago Bears. Wow. Um. This this woman is senile, Gene. 
<laughs> she has early stages yeah. of dementia. There's no way anyone would be proud of this uh, Chicago Bears team franchise. Well, they, I mean, it's he, a mess. On the ups- this is a Super Bowl team. <laughs> You're right. It's got a Super Bowl team, not a Super Bowl quarterback. And I think, uh, yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think uh, yeah, you, it, right. I think reality. All right, mm. Let's do this chronologically. And then, uh, you know, again, this is all these stupid pregame festivities. They brought out the night 85 Bears, Gene. The yes, 85 I Bears. Would, did, right. Because we haven't They're seen. Living up- yeah, we have not seen enough of these guys, for God's sakes. God. Can we uh, can we stop with the 85 Bears, Gene? Huh? Can we stop with this? <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for God's sakes, the 72 Dolphins, they don't even drag those guys out, you know, as much as the goddamn 85 Bears. Mm. And, and they were perfect. Yeah. All right. And then, of course, they had the uh, the super fans skid on. Doing the the, yeah. the Bears, uh, okay. the... guys. I would say I I went to the Bears uh pre, uh tailgate, but I didn't see those guys. George went and the other guys, but uh yeah, I thought I thought they would be outside doing skits or something. Uh yeah um well that's I mean that's a question I mean who do, do they get do these guys get paid royalties for this stuff? Whoever you know created the the, the super fans. Yeah, well Bob Odenkirk helped. He created uh, Better Call Saul. Did he? I if you know that. Because yeah. it was on SNL, right? Yeah. I did not know He that. was at SNL and Second City oh, in okay. Chicago. He's a Chicago guy. He was there when Chris Farley and all those guys were there. Oh, okay. That's when they created Yeah. All right. So there you go. All right. Uh, anyway, that, that's another thing. We, I mean, by the way, this is the only thing uh, paying George Wentz rent. Okay. He's uh, <laughs> not a lot of options if you're George Went, right? Right. right. Unless there's yeah. a, a Cheers movie. I don't know. Is there a Cheers movie script being an option around? That would be good, right? No. People would see that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think people really <laughs> – I, I think – I Seinfeld, that's, I just don't think there's a lot of uh, demand for Cheers stuff. Although it's so huge. I don't know. What's the, what's the lady's name? Christine um... – uh, who oh, was his girlfriend yeah. for a while? They got replaced Diane. Kirstie Alley. Kirstie Alley. Alley. Yeah, yeah. I was, she's still, she, uh, blah, blah, blah. sorry, she's still alive, right? Yeah, they both are alive. Okay. And then uh, Shelly Long, he, she was the first one. She didn't She didn't get a round. She, I'm sorry, she did not get uh, along with Ted Danson, right? That's what happened? Yeah, then she left, she left and Kirstie Alley came in. Yep. All right. All right, and then uh, Gina again. This is I'm, I'm filling you all in because you didn't see the broadcast, so I feel like I'm doing you a service here. Ed Nagy, Ed Nagy. Do you know who Ed Nagy is, Gene? Uh, is he related to the coach Matt Nagy? Uh, I believe so. And there was a I don't know. You may have seen this actually this Sunday, but there's a Verizon commercial, Gene. Uh, where they have an engineer named Ed Nagy doing wow. the talking. And he's on the commercial, and you'll probably see it if you watch uh, football. I know they play it this Sunday. And, okay. uh, wow, Gene, that's – you talk about corrupt. The Bears? Mm. Man, even even even, yeah. even the brother gets to, gets to wet his beak a little bit. Yikes. <laughs> he's trying to get some toll money? <laughs> Ed's trying to get some toll money? No, but I, I guess Ed's hey. the engineer for Verizon, so – Hey, by the way, uh, to the state of Illinois. So I was driving uh, after the game. At, so I guess probably after ten o'clock, they they don't eat, they have toll booths you have to go through, and they took the people out. So you just you just have to put your credit card into a machine. So yeah, I just stopped three times and paid tolls, and now it's just credit card. So it's like three giant ATMs on the <laughs> the highways of Illinois, the part I was in. They don't even pay. They don't even pay their toll people anymore. And are are, just, are, are they like uh, you may incur a two dollar transaction fee as well? Man, that would suck. Oh, I, yeah, that would be bad. But it costs six dollars to go. I don't know, forty miles. Yeah. And I and and then 
I don't, boy, I don't know where all the money in <laughs> Illinois goes. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's too, uh, they're paying off, uh, Soldier Field, Gene. Soldier Field. Yeah. Do they pay for that, by the way? Or didn't they raise taxes no, for it? The own, uh, it's been, it's been owned forever. I don't know if they paid, they did a renovation years ago. Uh, it's owned by the park district. The Bears have nothing to do with it. So let's just spend uh, five hundred million dollars to add a bunch of box seats that the uh, little league flag football team can use. I mean that that's the logic right there. Yeah, absolutely. Do they? I mean, but the Bears make the money off the concession stands, though, right? So, it's... Uh, I probably um, I'm I don't know. Yeah, for sure. Maybe that's, that's why you play football games is you make money off the beer and all that crap. That they feed you, so. All right. All right, Gene, let's actually talk about the game, huh? Okay. Enough bl- okay. enough blabbering about the uh, in- inconsequentials. All right. So the Packers, yes. well, well, do you, it, it seemed like it was pretty uh, geeked up there, huh, during kickoff? Pretty exciting, huh? It was, it, I mean, it was absolutely electric. It was, wow, it was loud. It was great. Yeah, the atmosphere, the excitement level when the Bears came out, wow. Yeah, it was crazy. I'll tell you what, there is mm-hmm. something kind of uh, amazing about being with a group of like 60,000 people and just kind of watching something like live like unfold in front of you because, you know, you watch stuff on TV, but then you still there's still like this like barrier. But then when you're actually like there, you know. Yeah. It's, it's very strange. That was just – I when it, that's why I wanted to get in there. I mean, if you're gonna pay all that money, you got to be in there when the game starts. So all that stuff was so exciting. Oh, by oh the by God. the way, was it hard as hell to get inside? Like, were there long lines and stuff, or was it pretty easy? Yeah, it was pretty tough. And and the Bears start uh, ticketing. Uh, you have to have a mobile ticket. There's no paper tickets, and a lot of old people, oh, I guess, God. are pretty confused. <laughs> oh my God! This is the. This is the first year they only take mobile tickets. Jeez. So uh, what I heard was a lot of people had trouble or getting the internet. Yeah, you know, all that stuff. What if you're Virginia, Virginia McCaskey can't even get into your own goddamn stadium? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Why don't some of the elder Bears fans lobby her to, you know, get this, you know, old ageism. Ageism. I think that's called ageism, Gene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was tough. People, I, from what I heard, a lot of people had a hard time. Yep. So. All right. So the Packers get the ball first, and it's a quick three and out. And it looks like Packers have not learned anything, have not changed, look like every other pretty much drive from last year. Things are not looking good. The Bears get the ball back, or not back, but they get the ball. First play out of the gate is the Wildcat, Gene. What were your what was going through your head when you saw that? I I don't even I don't remember that. <laughs> I okay, I'm gonna just have to take your word for it well, on that one. Well, I didn't really There's a fumble. They fumbled on the very first play. Do you remember that? Not really. <laughs> that's, I mean That's pretty uh, strange. I, I don't Yeah. No I, I did see every play. I just don't remember that. <laughs> No, it's okay. That's what happens when when you go to these games. You just nothing kind of. You just don't. Re- you only remember kind of the cool stuff or moments or whatever. You don't remember. Also, I was taking notes. It's not fair. All right, someone. <laughs> oh no! All right, there you, we go. I was gonna say, did someone break into your house? All right, uh, all right. So uh, basically, for each team, the first two series for each of them look like the last two years. Meaning, Packers looked pretty inept. And uh, Mitch Trubisky uh, did not look good. Did not look and good. Not, I don't. I don't think he ever hit a stretch where he looked good. Yeah, just really missing throws. I mean, he's he's better when he runs, but you, I mean, what you can't run every single play, you know, and get the first down. And uh, he was so bad that the uh, the Packers game plan was uh, we wanted to make Mitch play quarterback. We knew that they had a lot of weapons. We knew that they were dangerous. We knew all of those things, but we knew if we could make Mitch play quarterback that we'd have a chance, Tremont Williams said, by a Matt Schneeman of the Athletic, Schneidman. So uh, basically, <laughs> by the way, do you think the Bears were uh, trying to make Aaron Rodgers play quarterback, Gene? <laughs> do you think that was their <laughs> game plan? 
Like, uh, no. When you I heard that, it makes sense. I heard that the next day, and it makes sense. But wow, not a not a ringing endorsement. Yeah, not good when they're uh, making your quarterback uh, play quarterback and he can't uh, step up to the challenge. I mean, if they, I mean, why don't they get like Cade McNown? I mean, Cade McNown would play better than this guy, right? Yeah, you gotta think. Just get like a competent quarterback. I mean, just admit your mistake. He's still under his rookie contract. I mean, just get someone in there. Uh, I mean, he's a second overall pick, and he was picked ahead of Deshaun Watson and uh, had home Patrick Holmes in the same draft. That makes it really tough. Yeah. Yeah, they picked they picked this guy over Patrick Mahomes. Like that's just And Deshaun Watson. Yeah. Yeah. Why, Gene? Because he's a white guy? Is that possible? Well has there been a black and uh Bears quarterback? Uh yeah, I I'm not sure. I don't I don't, I don't remember. Not, Maybe not, like not. definitely not like a starting quarterback. Maybe like a backup that had to take over, but but geez, I'm trying to even think about like a backup quarterback. <laughs> I don't want to say anything bad about Chicago. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, yeah. Um, all right. The bear. Hey, hey. Good news though, Gene. The Bears made a field goal. So there you go. Yes, that was when that guy lined up. Eddie Pinero. That the excitement level when he made the kick is a 38 yarder, I think. Yes, plays went pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's lifted. The curse is lifted. Only the curse wasn't the kicker; it was uh, your quarterback, um, Chicago. All right, and uh, I'll tell you what, Gina. This is again. I'm just reading my notes. Every time Mitch threw the ball, it looked like. It, I mean, it looked. It felt like it was going to be an interception. Like it was That's always. What- yeah, go ahead. I knew, I knew that he. It didn't seem like he was that good, but then, then afterwards, when you hear it, where people are saying he could have thrown four interceptions, something like that. Oh yeah, it looked like almost every single play, like there could have been an interception, even the balls he overthrew. It's like, ah, uh, is that going to get intercepted? Um. So yeah, well, both teams looked uh, pretty bad uh, throughout the whole uh, uh game. The Packers had, uh, you know, they kind of busted it open. Uh, when they had this great series where, uh, drive when it was only, I think it was like four plays or whatever. And uh, Aaron Rodgers makes a monster throw, a no-look monster throw to, uh, is this St. Quinn Various or whatever this guy's name is? Envious? I think. But uh, you remember you remember that play, Gene? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so the you know I've been to a couple of these football games now, and uh, you know the thing about watching these things live is that when you see this stuff in 3D, and you see like the depth of the ball moving through the air, and then you're like watching it come down, and then the receiver catches it. I mean that there really is nothing better than that. Yeah, it's quite an amazing feat, just to see just to yeah. see a ball go that far and perfectly placed. Pretty amazing. I really got a good view because I could see the whole field. That's one good thing about sitting up that high. But, yeah, it's great to see it develop. And then, yeah, it's pretty great. Yep. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. That's that, I, I, I like being at football games. So I think it's pretty cool. All right. And yeah. uh, then they actually uh, – and then Jimmy Graham actually scored a uh, touchdown. So there you go, Jimmy. And uh, basically, yeah, after that happened uh, – well, I should say – um, he snatched the ball over there. And then, yeah, the second half, I'm sorry, the first half ended and booze, booze raining down on the Bears. Now, I was surprised. I was surprised how quickly the, the fans turned on the Bears. I mean, it didn't take much. I think his expectations were so high. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, not good. Well, I think they're, I think everyone's just like, yeah, this guy sucks. Why is this guy. Why is this guy playing? Why is this guy a quarterback? I think everyone's just like, yeah, this guy sucks. All right, and then I uh, think go ahead. People are very nervous, and it really hurts that Patrick Mahomes is so good. That's for sure. <laughs> See that guy light it up every week. All right, and then the Packers uh, were the first team in NFL history for the regular season to challenge a PI interference play. And uh, okay, let, I mean, I, let's just stop this. This is just ridiculous. Why are we doing this, right? Why? I mean, just stop the flow of the game. It's just, what is it, the NBA? You know, cut this yeah. crap out. All right, I'll tell you one thing, though, Jim. Uh, I'm sorry, Gene. Uh, Mitch Trubisky did throw a Hail Mary. Do you remember that play? 
Uh, yeah. Uh, when? Uh, yeah, you're touching. You're touching your mic a little bit. There's some backfire. But... Oh, okay. But he threw a hail mary. But there was a pa offensive pass interference, so maybe that's why you didn't yeah, uh, I do remember, you that. remember that. Yeah. Yep. So there you go. And then, yeah, yeah, near the end of the game, Mitch and the Bears are driving and uh, throws an interception in the end zone. So that one, I knew as soon as he threw it, I could see it. And then I watched her replaying the screen. I was like, what the hell are you doing? That one was not a good pass, right? Yeah, it was not good. Yeah, I mean, you knew it was coming, right? And yeah, that, that's just a backbreaker, right? You're that close. I mean, you know, who know? I, I don't remember how much time was on the clock, but even if they get a field goal, I mean, you know, they're down by seven, right? So you could do another Hail Mary or something, but yeah. Yeah, Gene. What, uh, so what was the mood? I mean, you know, well, well, first of all, uh, well, the, yeah, go ahead. Now, everyone, everyone has to go out the same way and you walk back up towards Michigan Avenue. So, you're not going because Soldier Field's not a lot of parking lot. Everybody's going out the tunnel, so you're surrounded by thousands of fans. And the, to say people are pissed off, it, it, wow, what a turnaround from three hours earlier. Yeah, people were very angry, very angry. Um, yeah, Gene, you're still something's still scuffing the mic. I don't know, it's going back and oh. forth. So I don't know if you got. Oh, there you go. That's better. Nah, not. Okay, all right. All right. So, uh, yeah. Well, first of all, hey, Gene, were there a lot of a uh, a lot of Packers fans there? That I I would say not a lot. No, maybe because they saw the ticket prices. Yeah. Right. There were there were some there were some, but not not last year the game in Green Bay. There are a lot more Bear fans there, but so much easier to get tickets at Lambeau because it's so much bigger. But no, maybe a thousand. Okay. Mm, well, Gene, well, pretty scattered up. Well, Gene, four hundred and fifty dollars. That's a weekend up north camping in Wisconsin. Oh Good my Lord. gosh! And no, no, Mitch Trubisky too for that price too. Just say that. Oh my god, they All have right. to be super. So, I mean, did you no no regret? You can't no regrets though, right? Can't have any. Regrets. No, it was great. The whole the game the game wasn't great, obviously. Uh, not, but it was such a cool night. Yeah, I was like, okay, whatever. So did it, you? It was great. Did you drive back to uh, Dubuque, or what? Did, did you stay I, in town? I, I started driving. No, I stayed in Rockford. That's that's the three tolls, and I stayed there. It's hard getting out of Chicago, a lot of traffic. <laughs> and then I stayed there, and then uh, I went back the next morning, and then on Saturday I went to the Iowa game. Iowa won thirty to nothing. And I took my mom to the game. That was great. And then on Sunday, I drove to Milwaukee. And for the – see the last of the – man, the, the series. Cubs are so disappointing. All right. We'll talk about yeah. that. All right, Gene, you're, something's going on with that mic, Gene. So I don't know what you're doing, if you're holding it weird something, or you're setting it down. But it's uh, it's uh, pretty noticeable. All right. Okay. Here, maybe you're breathing on it, or do you have a fan on it or something? I don't know. But it's uh, – here. So, I, Gene, oh, I don't have the yeah. fan on, Gene. You're just going to have to sacrifice not have a fan on, Gene. Okay. Good uh, all right. I'm sacrificing. Can you imagine them filming The Godfather and then uh, Al Pacino? Hey, I need my fan. I don't care if it messes up the sound. I need the fan on. Good. God. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, all right. So, uh, yeah. Any, any, any final thoughts on the Chicago Green Bay game? Uh, they went from the outhouse to the penthouse. Packers are really good. The, the defense is great. Uh, the Bear fans, uh, yeah. And then I listen a lot of ESPN Chicago. So, Man. yeah, panic is panic set in. And they play at Broncos this week. So if they get beat this week, it's going to be not good. Well, you know, and people are definitely worried about Trubisky. That's for sure. You know, you know, people. I mean, you know, Vic Fangio is going to be gunning for them. He's going to go for a shutout. Yeah. What if they play two games and they score three points? That's another thing. They had all off season to prepare, and they only scored three points. Oof. Yeah, I mean, who who is even the core? Uh, I'm sorry, backup for the Bears. I don't. Oh, who is, is it? Like anyone? Um, oh, Chase Daniels. I think it's Chase Daniels. Oh, really? Oh my! Put that guy. Yeah, in. he'll be fine. Put him in. What are they doing? 
What? Yeah. I don't know. There you go. That, that that's another. I mean, well, I guess it's one game. But I mean, if right. Trubisky doesn't play well the first half, I mean, you gotta think he gets benched, right? Compression this week, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, you know Nagy, Matt Nagy. I think he's gonna be like, you know what? I I'm playing for my job here. I'm coaching for my job. We gotta get rid of this guy. He's the one guy holding me back. <laughs> Oh my god! Because they have a they have an awesome defense. I mean, they do have a, they have a couple of good running backs. They got good receivers. I mean, it's just when they got to throw, <laughs> when they need Yikes. the quarterback to do anything. It's kind of a big deal, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Good God! Like what? What's up with these teams? I mean, there's definitely ten quarterbacks better. I mean, even what's the one guy with the long neck they gave fifteen million dollars to? They got rid of him. What was that guy's name? Um. You play for Tampa Bay forever? I don't know. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who you talk about. I, I, Jeff something? I don't remember. Maybe I'm wrong. All yeah. Right. All right, screw it. All right, all right. Well, Gene, we can move on. All right. So, but, yeah, I mean, just uh, in regards to the Packers, um, you know, a lot of those players didn't play for the preseason, and uh, the defense did look awesome. They looked dangerous, too. They looked hungry, and I think they definitely – and, Gene, I don't know. Did you see the videos of the uh, locker room? Like after the game and all that stuff. No, I didn't. Well, no. uh, you know, Matt Lafleur is like, you know, giving props to everyone and blah blah blah, and he's like, "All right, guys, thank you." Blah blah. blah. And then A Rod was like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa," because all the guys started moving away. He's like, "Whoa, whoa, whoa." He's like, "It's not every day you win your uh, first NFL game." And then he gave the game ball to uh, Matt, and then uh, all the players started to be like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So it just uh, looked really good, uh, really good energy in there. So, uh, like, uh, like he's part of the team, you know what I mean? Definitely a lot different than what they did. So, all right. Pack, team Packers are going to be good this year. Right? The Super Bowl. Super Bowl. There you go. All right. Now, I'm going to see him. Oh, I'm going to see him a week from Sunday. The only problem is that Matt LaFleur is going to be, uh, he, if he wins the Super Bowl this year, uh, he's going to be the coach for, like, the next 15 years, and then, like, by year 10, it's going to be, like, super stale and all this shit, and then it's going to be another fucking ever on this. Just like Matt, Matt, Mike McCarthy. What would you say? You're going to see them? Oh, yeah, uh, in Green Bay. Uh, Broncos, oh. speaking of, yeah, the Broncos and the uh, Packers. Oh, okay. All right, there you go. All right, Gene, Gene, do you have a hard out here in 10 minutes, or can you stay a little bit longer? Yeah, like, 15 or whatever. All right, okay. I'll, I'll, we'll get through these other games quick, uh, really okay. quick. All right, Gene, I don't know if you're watching football on Sunday. No, you're at the game, so you did not. But uh, I'll just fill you in really yeah. quick. I can, yeah, yeah. Uh, Atlanta at Vikings. Uh, Vikings D looked really, really good, like very, very good. So I, th- I think they're still pretty good. Uh, Kirk Cousins only threw 10 passes. Um. But they still whooped up on Atlanta, so uh, maybe Atlanta is just really bad. But yeah, the, I think the Vikings are still going to be pretty good. I think it's Packers, Vikings, maybe one and two, and then Bears, and then maybe Lions for the teams. Lions, are, Lions are already a complete disaster, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get. Let, yeah, should we just talk about that really quick? So sure. Lions played. Uh, even though this is totally out of order, but Lions played uh, the Arizona. Cardinals, and uh, I actually uh, it looked like the Lions were just gonna like pretty much win the game because not win the game, but like uh, you know just yeah I guess eventually win the game because uh, Kyler Murray. Listen, I don't I don't watch college football. <laughs> I just know that this is a kid that they uh, took a risk on and all that stuff. He's like an undersized quarterback, but when you see this guy like standing next to other NFL players. He, he looks he looks like a he looks like a midget. I'm sorry, like he looks like he's very small. He I, is very, I he, yes, tiny. Like he looks how how tall? I'm gonna Google him right now. Do you know? I think well, they claim he's almost five ten, but people are saying five, he's five seven. Yeah, five ten. Jeez, I'm taller than that guy. That's pretty sad. Pretty right. pretty sad. All right, and, uh, yeah, he looked totally out of place. And I know, you know, everyone's saying that uh, Drew Brees was small, but he overcame all that stuff. But uh, I don't know if you can overcome being that small in the NFL because he's really, really fucking small. 
Um, so I actually uh, I took I took the time because all these other games didn't really seem that interesting to me. Seahawks, Seattle, who gives a fuck, and uh, all those other and Dallas Giants. It looked like Dallas was gonna run with it. So I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna take a nap. So I actually did not watch the rest mm. of the uh, Detroit game, but apparently he popped off Kyler Murray, and uh, got the game to overtime, and they uh, they tied. So first game of the year, they tie the Detroit Lions tie. So not not a good start. Not a good start. No, in Matt Patricia, I think he he uh, apparently he wasn't very good. Do I? Either. You know. Yeah, but I mean, I I don't know, you know, Bill Simmons, ra- you know, rags on this guy too, but like, I don't think they're terrible. You know, I'm sure there's worse coaches than Matt Patricia, so I I think people just don't like him because he looks like a homeless guy. Yeah. I think it's uh, yeah, and it's everybody. Yeah, and he's yeah, he's super rude to everyone too. So, all right, and then uh, KC at Jacksonville. Uh, just watching uh, Patrick Mahomes is always uh, fun to do. And uh, just, I don't know, Gene, it looks like every single pass this guy makes, it's 20 yards or it could break for a touchdown. And he's, uh, his touch this year, uh, he's really worked on his accuracy and he's just really placing every single ball in the perfect spot. And it's really, uh, it's it's just really fun to watch him play quarterback. That's, so That's what, that's part of the problem with the Bears because all the Bear fans are super aware that the Bears traded up to get Trubisky and they could have Pat Mahomes. But I mean, was Pat Patrick Mahomes doing this stuff in college, though? I mean, I guess Deshaun oh, yeah. Watson was doing this stuff too, huh? Yeah. Oh, he 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 had uh, yeah, he lit it up. But everyone thought it was just the offense. It's kind of a gimmick offense and stuff. So yeah. <laughs> you still have to make the throws, right? I mean, if, if you're throwing as well as he did now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty bad, I guess, right? I mean, yes, I will. Yeah, I I mean, whatever, you know, it's like uh, there's probably this uh, unfair rap about, uh, you know, these black quarterbacks that do awesome in college and then they just kind of fizzle out in the pros that probably I mean, look at Vince Young. I mean, who else? Uh, uh, Marcus Russell. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Oh, he's legendary. Marcus Russell. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I think there's definitely the stigma of these uh, these slinging quarterbacks. Uh, but, you know, I mean, you look at freaking Deshaun Watson, I mean, uh, Patrick Mahomes, and uh, Brisket, Jacoby Brisket. I mean, they're they, these guys are playing really well, for sure. Yeah. All right. And then Tennessee at Cleveland. We'll be uh, moving on here quick, Gene. Uh, I'm trying to watch uh, all Baker Mayfield's games. And – uh, I. That's cool. I'm so disappointed. I'm not even Browns. Oh, it's so disappointing. Everyone, even I was very excited about them, but wow, what a disaster. Well, they're so like, they had like 18 penalties or something. Like, they, yeah, they were just so undisciplined. They're, they're more undisciplined than Hugh Jackson when Hugh Jackson was yeah. uh, coaching them. How, how was that a but, step up? That guy never coached before. I don't know. Now it's, oh, I hope it doesn't. We'll see. They're on Monday Night Football next week. They play the Jets. Another disaster. Yeah. Well, Baker Mayfield does always look uh, good uh, playing football uh, when he like rolls out and just slings the ball and puts everything into it and throwing the ball of his body into the ball. Um, it's uh, he's pretty fun to watch. And uh, I'll tell you what, though, uh, he did get his ass whooped. So uh, they need a better offensive line, or they need the offensive line to do better. Yeah. All right. So we can move on really quick. All right. Detroit and Arizona. We talked about that game already. And then just some odds and ends news. Uh, an und- I'm sorry. An unidentified buyer offered $3.2 billion for the Indianapolis Colts, a source said. But the team is not for sale. Um, and then Mark Florio said possible translation. The team may be for sale. But if someone is willing to offer more than three point two billion dollars, man, three point mm-hmm. two billion dollars for uh, the Indianapolis Colts, Jesus God! Like that, I mean, that means the uh, Dallas Cowboys have to be like five billion, right, or something like that. Uh, that one you can understand somewhat, but that's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. Well, I'm just look how much. Good God, 
I mean, you're guaranteed probably a billion dollars of income, of revenue every single year. I would imagine, right? All right, when, yeah. when everything's all totaled up. But, Gene, $3.2 billion, Gene. That's a lot of Percocets. <laughs> Do you know how many Percocets you can buy with that? Good Lord. Uh, a lot? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Jim Mercer? Yeah, but he's, yeah. Like, he's like, I can get more, though. I can get more. By the way, I mean J- Jim Irsay. I mean, he doesn't. He's not going to sell the team, right? He likes running an NFL football team, right? His dad ran a team. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, you're right. Right, absolutely. So he's not going to sell. I mean, what else is the guy going to do? Play music, <laughs> tour the country, sell drugs, maybe just die. Obviously, his kids aren't going to let him uh, sell the team. All right, and then Gene. Uh, I guess we should just give our two cents in this whole Antonio Brown mess. Did he did he go to Michigan, by the way? Or where did he go to school at? Do you recall? He went to a small – oh, I'm, I'm not sure. It was a small school. I Okay. Well, well we, I he went to a small I, – I don't know. He was a six-round pick, though, wasn't he? Sixth or fifth round? Yeah, maybe. I think Something it was three-round, like actually. But, um, well, here is uh, – we've only held off on this because it's uh, nothing to do with the Midwest, but uh, here we go. we got a Midwest connection here. Um, so he uh, kind of got into an altercation with Mike Maynock, called him a cracker, and uh, almost nice. almost got physical. But guess what? Uh, who held him back? Vontez Burfick. Wow. Yeah, Gene, let me tell you something, Gene. When uh, Vontez Burfick is holding you back – you know you're acting crazy, Gene. You know you're acting nuts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when mm-hmm. Vontae is perfect is the uh, voice of reason, something is fucked up. Something is definitely fucked up. That's... All right, Anto- is that? Antonio Brown is uh, with a... I mean, is this going to go well? Does, does he get cut after one week? I, I bet he gets cut before the week in, the game even starts. I yeah. don't. I don't know. I mean... I, a lot of people don't think he's going to last a year, but I if he doesn't fall in line with the Patriots, I don't see how there's any hope for him. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess it is Tuesday, like right now, though. So uh, that's a pretty good sign mm-hmm. that he isn't uh, any not caused any drama yet. So, all right. And then, uh, Gene, let's go to baseball really quick. Um, yeah. You said you went to. Uh, Said game. All right. Well, let's let's build it up to there really quick. Um, before we start though, Crimble Kimbrel is on the ten day IL. Yeah. Just what you want yeah. when you're fighting for a uh, playoff spot. That's right. Javi Baez is out probably for the rest of the regular season. You got it. You got bank. He got her in the uh, Milwaukee series, right? Yeah. Uh, he got hurt before. He didn't play in the Milwaukee series. Oh, I think he got hurt previous. slide base. I think it was the previous Milwaukee series, though the one last week, but uh, yeah, two weeks ago. Uh, yes, yeah. All right, so let's just go again. This is very similar to the series from last week, where the Cubs uh, came out in a pounding and uh, ended yeah. up winning the game ten to five. Although there was a couple of situations where I think the Brewers kind of got robbed of. Uh, I think Yelich kind of got some bad calls, but you were, of course, uh, at the Bears game. So, I mean, did you find any solace in the fact that the Cubs beat up on the Brewers on that yeah, Thursday? And I, 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 that one, I thought, okay, there we go. Uh, and then I was thinking, man, on Sunday I'll be going and the Cubs will be going for the four-game sweep because <laughs> I thought, the, wow, was I wrong. They just fell apart. Well, Schwar- oh, well Schwarber hit a grand slam. I feel like Schwarber hit like a 10,000 grand slams against Brewers. Um, but that was pretty much the only highlight for the weekend because, uh, yeah, Milwaukee Brewers shutting down the Chicago Cubs. Yeah. And then on Sunday, there were a lot of Cub fans there, though. I mean, there were more Cub fans than there were Packer fans at Bears game. Hamels got hammered. Yeah. On, uh, and then the game I was at, Lester, Lester had a lead and he gave up eight runs. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then uh, while well, you're uh, also uh, Kinsler, your reliever on uh, the Saturday game, gave up a run, a couple of runs, a run on the bottom of the ninth. And then, uh, yeah, Lester. Lester got hammered. 
He's he's really struggling. Cubs, I man, maybe they'll hold on for the wild card, but they are really there's oh, it's not good. All right, Yelich, okay. Yelich had a great series, and Madden, re, you know, refuses to walk him. Madden is very stubborn. He's going to pitch to him, and kind of, kind of, not so, not so smart, not so smart. All right, and then game four. Now you were at this game. Now this is uh, the game where Addison Russell got hit in the face. I thought he got yes. crushed in by the nose or something. Oh my gosh, that was bad. And he he actually he when they got him up and going he went to first and then uh he, so he stayed in the game then he left and then now he he's gonna be out for a while sounds like did he break his nose or something like that or what actually because just brush his nose right yeah he hurt his nose but he get, they say he got a concussion <sighs> he stayed in the game all right well when just stayed in the game very shortly then they took him out all yeah. right. Uh, let me ask you this, Gene. Uh, when he was on the ground, like with his hands to his face, with the uh, trainers over him and all this stuff, was anyone really concerned about him? Did anyone really feel bad? There's a lot of about people that? that there are a lot of people saying, "Oh, that's karma for you." Yes. Well, hey, let me uh, let me ask you this, Gene. Do you think uh, – doesn't seem like S and Russell uh, doesn't feel that good to be hit in the face uh, unexpectedly, huh? Oh huh, Addison? When you're not expecting wow. it and you get hit in the face, not so good, huh? Mm. <laughs> do you think anyone – a lot of people – Do you think any of his teammates were like, uh, good, motherfucker? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's Yep. <laughs> Everyone was thinking that. I, I knew that even the announcers were thinking that, but they didn't actually want to say it. So, uh, yeah. I See, Gene, that's why I can't be a uh, color commentator, because I would just be like, look. Yeah. <laughs> I would get fired, because I would uh, slip. I would slip my tongue. All right. All right. Well, Gene, I know you have a hard out. You have a show. Where, where, what show are you going to uh, today? tonight <laughs> no i gotta do something else but <laughs> i was at i was at last night i saw hart and joan jet great oh, okay yeah <laughs> all right all right well uh i think uh that's gonna be the show um thank you for uh listening and watching as always let me yeah. uh, get the music going i'll be back in the midwest next week again not not a week from thursday i'm gone oh okay oh. all right so for gene Steichen, my name is chris Stotts. it's been the midwest sports show see you guys next week bye